What's happening, y'all, and welcome. This is episode 124 of Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow, the number one Arrowverse podcast on Pornhub. I am your host, the self-knighted Sir Cussalot Travis Pointer, a.k.a. the Dragon King, whose name got stolen, a.k.a. Big T, a.k.a. T-Money, a.k.a. Sweet T, a.k.a. Black Merlin, a.k.a. The HNIC. And I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Mara the Shark Watkins. Hello. How you doing tonight, Mara? I am toasty. Get down. Sorry. Dog is being needy right now. I don't have time. Pupper love. Yeah, I know. I know. He wants love, and this is not the time for that. I'm sorry. Normally it is. He just he needs a bath in a in the worst way. So <laughs> he can't be on my lap right now. Um okay. anyway. We're not here to talk about my dog. We're here to talk about the Arrowverse right now. You know, Supergirl, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, Black, Lightning, Batwoman, and now Stargirl. Cause that's what we do here on Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. We adapt. We do. We do. <laughs> So, with that being said, you want to just get into it? Because Stargirl is all that's happening right now? Yep. So, this episode of Stargirl was called what? Brainwave. Brainwave. And there was a whole lot of braining and waving going on in this episode. So, before we get into it, what do you think of this episode overall? These episodes and like dramatic animes only they're not animes where it's like this is how it ends find out next week and it's like oh you son of a bitch (laughs) that's how you got me i mean that sounds like a good tv show to me i know it's slowly star girl is slowly moving up my list but i think it's yeah you know you know what show you should do that and got everybody hooked and like changed the face of television as we know it i'm scared to ask Lost. Lost changed television as we know it by doing just that. That's all I'm saying. Give Lost is due respect. Respect it, know it, love it. But back to the Arrowverse. But, I mean... I guess, but we're not here to talk about Lost. Not at all. But you say you're slowly moving up in your in your what you in your rankings of Arrowverse shows or what? Yeah, like yes, Courtney and Pat still low key frustrate me with their with like for different reasons. But the story of this show is kind of like getting more and more interesting to me. I feel you. Like it's Courtney as a character frustrates the fuck out of me. But she's a dumbass teenager, so it makes sense for her to be stupid like that. So I get it. <laughs> so it's like they're accomplishing what they're setting forth to do. So I get it. I'm with it. Since you brought it up, though, where where would you rank it right now? In favorite shows of the Arrowverse? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... In the current standings, yeah, um, Arrow doesn't exist anymore. So don't put that in there. I know how much you love it. Don't worry, it's not there anymore. Um, I would have to go with see, it's hard because I like this season of flat, like. The Flash was consistently, like, the top show for me for a while, aside from, like, Arrow. But, I like, they were tops for two different reasons. I feel and, you. Uh, and so it's, like, it's hard to put Flash as number one because I just – I was unhappy with this season, but also at the same time, I also know because partially – part of that is because it was affected by COVID. But yeah. Before, we didn't get the end of that season, so yeah. But even with the without the ending of it, though, 
certain a lot of things in the story just were annoying because they dragged for me way too long. But well, that's I think that's a that's a product of the era we live in and them still trying to do things the old way, like the whole twenty twenty something episodes per season thing, where we live mm-hmm. in the era of like Netflix and Hulu, where honestly ten to twelve episodes 12, is enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like give us ten to twelve, 12 solid to ones. You know, I, see, I think 10 to 12 solid episodes is enough. That's all we need. There's no need for you to go into like, you know, the 16 to 18 or 22, 24 anymore. Don't do that. If you're one of those shows that wants to tell a solid story, 10 to 12 episodes, perfect. Leave it right there. We're good. That's how you end up with all those filler episodes. You're like, oh, we got to get 22, 26 episodes. I'm like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. You can cut out 10 of them right now. Yeah, exactly. Give us 12 solid episodes. And, you know, I think because most of the shows are starting not until January, I think this would be a great opportunity for them to test that model of how well of a story they can get in a shortened season. Because if you think about it, I feel like 12, 14 weeks of a show, I feel like they can... Fin- they can wrap up um, the rest of you know this story with Eva, or they can just continue it and just have it be like a shortened season and just kind of see how they can fill out a story like that. Because the last thing I want for them to do is to start this shows in like January, February, and keep going all the way until like don't do that freaking end that shit in May like you supposed to. <laughs> Like, like, this goes way into like I just realized like we're still doing the show and it's the middle of July. Yeah, but that's just because they decided to put Star Girl on the CW. That's really all that that changed that. Like, if they had stuck know. with their original plan of keeping it just on the DC Universe app, we probably wouldn't be doing this show right now. Oh no, of course not. But then you wouldn't get to hang out with me once a week, you know. You can still hang out. It doesn't have to be under work pretenses. Yeah, it does. Oh. oh. Excuse me. So here's the thing: you did that to yourself. Like this is like you you loaded the gun, you cocked it, and put it in my hand, and said, "I dare you to shoot." Like you can't blame you can't blame me for that one. You cannot blame me for that at all. If you say so. Anyway, let's let's get into the actual episode of this damn show. Um. What was the name of the episode? Brainwave. And there was a whole lot of branding and waving going on. Did I say this already? I feel like I yes, said that you already. Did. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, did you? Did we do this already? Like, <laughs> how, did how did we, we get, get back to the beginning of the show? <laughs> yeah, like, how did we do all that talking and somehow we're still at the beginning of the show? How did that happen? How? I don't know. If y'all can tell us, that'd be great. Oh, man. So anyway, this episode kicks off. I can't believe I did that. (laughs) How did I make the same joke twice in a row? (laughs) I don't know. And it wasn't even that good of a joke. Why did I do it again? (laughs) I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. So this episode kicks off. We go back to, you know, decades ago. And um brainwave i don't remember his real name was you know he was experimenting on mice and shit oh dr king which i took objection to but um greg you knew you knew that was wrong (laughs) that it it wasn't his fault he you know brainwave was you know he was part of the injustice society way back when before greg even thought about making tv shows about this shit um is you know in his early years he's experimenting on mice and shit, and he's like he's leaving his lab and he's getting robbed. Some dude's trying to rob him. He's saying all this fucked up shit in his head, like oh they won't miss him. Nobody cares. I can kill him and get away with it. Blah blah blah. But he ends up using his mind powers that he got by experimenting on on himself and made the dude have a seizure and shit and killed him. And he said it like in these tapes he made of himself, like I think I killed a man tonight. Yeah, he did like some kind of like trial procedure, and I was just like, "Uh huh." Yeah, yeah. 
So back in the present, baby imagine, brain. Hmm? Wait, imagine. Because remember, I, I, like every week, I keep trying to think, how will they bring the, how will they bring this into the same universe? Now, what if the properties that one of the, I guess, scientific things that Brainwave was working with was green light? It's a possibility. I don't know. I'm just shooting the shit out there. Mm-hmm. So, back in the present, we got Baby Brainwave, aka Henry. Yeah, he's Henry. he's he's watching these old tapes from his father, and um, he starts experimenting and trying shit. And that's how we find out that Brainwave was experimenting on himself. That's how he got his Brainwave powers. And. <laughs> Then we cut to Courtney and Pat, and Courtney's talking to Pat about, you know, what happened when she was fighting Cindy, and Henry showed up and all that. And she's like, yo, I want to bring him in. I want him to be a part of the team. And this is when Pat tells her the story about when he was part of another team before the Justice Society was called. Which had me like, how the fuck old are you, Pat? How old are you? He's old as fuck. But, like, how old? Like, all these photos are, like, sepia- I'm just like, what? what is this? <laughs> Got me over here thinking Pat also like low-key immortal. <laughs> mm. So he was a part of another team called the Seven Soldiers, which included people like the Vigilante, the actual Vigilante, not the one we saw on Arrow, um, and other people, you know. I saw what looked like Jonah Hex in there and shit. So it was just like, we, we don't know. And then he said he lost touch with them some time ago. Mm-hmm. How, how long ago was it? Was it in the 1800s? Right. Like, like <laughs> how, you know, like, because I saw, like I said, I saw it looked like Jonah Hex. So, like, did you, were you around with Jonah Hex in the 1800s? Was, was that a thing? Should look that up. We should look up and see if, if they, if anyone else caught like Jonah Hex, like, they caught the Jonah Hex or something. If like that, that was actually that. Jonah Hex, because I also right. remember the vigilante also had other shit when he was like dressed like a cowboy and shit. So it might have just been the vigilante in that picture. Right. Um then we cut to the school and the and for some reason the janitor's mop just turns into the cosmic staff. I don't know. I don't I don't know what was happening there either. I'm confused. I I feel like I guess he's one of the seven soldiers, maybe. Do you think that? Or like, well, yeah, I don't know what's going he's on there. Someone, he's someone. Well, yeah, we know I, that. but it's And just... I think he's he's either from the JSA or he's from the Seven Soldiers thing because he knows who who Pat is. So, yeah. but I don't know when he started being called Stripes. So, I mean, I just kind of figured he has to be one of those two people. But the only other reason I think that is because why else would you mention them? I agree. It's just I got questions and I need answers. So um <laughs> back the to B-team. these back back to these dumbass teenagers. The B team. Fucking Beth is still just hanging around Cindy's house watching it and shit. Like, you know. That looks weird, Beth. This is, this is just how you get fucked up. I don't understand. But then we find out in this whole ep- little episode period that uh, Cindy withdrew from school because they said she was studying overseas with her mother, who's dead. So it's just like her mom's dead. So why would she be studying overseas with her mother? No one, like, no one thinks that's weird. Like, it's literally in her school file, I think, that her mom is dead. Yeah, so so she's overseas unless studying with her stepmother? Yeah, unless that's who they're talking about, like, who they would be referring to. I don't really care. Cindy's a piece of garbage anyway. So. Yeah, she is. She's trash. But... We see that that's not actually what's happening. Her father just got her locked up in the fucking dungeon in the basement. <laughs> She's got to put the lotion in the bucket or she gets the hose yeah. again. Push the lotion on her skin unless she gets the hose again. Put the lotion in the basket. Yeah. 
So she's like yelling at her dad and shit. She also threatens to kill him like she killed her mother. And I'm like, wait, what? You didn't know she killed her mom? No, I didn't know. How would I know she killed her mom? They said that. Well, they said she had something to do with it. I don't think she, I didn't think she like, like, you know, personally just killed her mother. I don't think it was on purpose, but I feel like, I feel like he treats her like, like, it's like, cause you don't fucking listen. This is why this happened. Like, it's still her fault. But she threatened to do it like she did it on purpose. That's my point. I, I feel like she just mad. Like she's just a teenager who just talking shit to say whatever. To establish teenagers are fucking dumb, dumb, man. I swear. I mean, we go through this every week. We know. Like, you <sighs> hold on. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, she does all that collar and complaining and threatening and shit, but clearly he don't see that shit. He just closes a little panel where she can see her face like, yeah, fuck you, shut up. <laughs> and we go back to baby brainwave and he's like studying and learning about his powers by like watching. We are his not going to overpass the part where he gassed his child. Well, yeah, he said like gas her and put her to sleep because she's getting on his damn nerves. You're right. And he's been doing it since she's been a baby. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because she's been I'm, tripping since she was a baby. So he's like, yo, we're going to gas her again because whatever. What? I was, I could, I was so phased. I was like, did he just say that he's been gassing her since baby time? Apparently she's been a fucking problem since she was a baby. I guess. <laughs> I'm not saying it's okay. I'm it's just not. saying <laughs> it's like this has been a thing. Like she's been a problem for a long time for him. <laughs> but yeah, baby brainwave. He's been studying and learning about all his powers from watching his father's tapes. He's like, you know, making shit move around the room and all that. Um He like Matilda when she realized she had powers. Just less music. There was significantly less music. Then we got uh, Rick and Yolanda. They're they're not very happy with Courtney right now because, like, yo, they do not want Henry on the team, but she wants Henry on the team. And Yolanda's like, yo, if he's on this team, I'm not on this team. And I get it. Imagine if somebody leaked your news to the whole school, you know? And then you want to give him the, the luxury of being called a hero? Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. He also can read your mind. <laughs> like, all these things put together equals fuck you. Stay the fuck away from me. Um. Also, I forgot to talk about this a little bit earlier, but uh, Cindy's father stole my name. He's a dragon king. No, he's, he's not. A he's a fucking dragon, bro. He's not. I'm he the probably, Dragon King, goddammit. He it. probably looks like a Komodo dragon. I am the Dragon King, not this motherfucker. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't care what you're saying about him. He still stole my name. Okay. I'm just saying. That nigga is ugly. Have you seen his face? No, but I'm Neither sure. Neither have he- I. They talking about he transformed. I can already see like through the hood, like he's He's got some kind of like weird looking like scaly shit around his eyes. I was like, this nigga's a dragon. Did you see the picture that Matt shared in the group? No. It looked like one of the Goombas from um, the Mar- Super Mario Brothers movie. I'm weak. Have you seen the Super Mario Brothers movie? Yes. Okay. Not so in a very sh- long time, but I've seen it. I to say, it's just like it came out like a year after you were born. So I didn't know if you saw it or not. <laughs> Disney played it quite often as, as I was growing up. So it's like on some Disney level. Disney played the Mario Brothers movie? I think it was Disney. It was either them or Nickelodeon, but one of them, I think it was It's Disney. more likely that it was Nickelodeon than Disney. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't care that much either. It's just weird that you said Nickel, that um, Disney played the movie. And I'm like, huh, one okay. of them played it. So, 
Let me find out more information about what the Injustice Society's plan is. This whole Project New America thing. They want to use Henry slash Brainwave's telepathic abilities combined with this amplifier device they've created to basically mind control all of America to being what they want them to be. And I'm like, yo, are you fucking kidding me? You know how this ends? The fates step in and they just like, nah, you can't do this. (laughs) And then the legends come in and they all fight. Of all the places for the fates to show up, this would be it. Why why aren't they here? (laughs) Right, like how do you not see that there's evil afoot, like even more evil than you? Yeah. Which now also makes me question. Yeah, like it makes me question that because it's like Legends has been one of those shows where when they do stuff, it hasn't been affecting that we can see the other shows. Do you get what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing a ripple effect from when they do things versus when Barry just goes ahead and does things because it's always Barry. It's It's almost like I've been saying this for years. But anyway, go ahead. What, What else? Yeah, you have. So like... I'm kind of curious as to, like, as you said, like, why wouldn't the fate show up here? Why does it, like, why does it seem like they're all, like, free, like, why are they free will? Like, it makes me wonder, are they on the same earth? Which takes me back to, are we doing this, the multi-earth thing again? It brings me back to what I said last week, where, you know, yeah, they brought them all to the same earth, but as we saw, on Crisis on Two Earths, when we, you know, did our spinoff series, Multiverse. Every decision made creates an alternate universe. One dis- one universe we made the decision, and one universe when we didn't. So, yeah, Oliver's, you know, antics created one single universe. But after that, alternate universes were created because of people's choices. Mm. Well. We'll see. Yeah. It's a a very, very fortunate situation for them where they can just have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Because they got all our heroes on the same earth, but they can still do the multiverse thing because every decision, in theory, creates an alternate universe. At least that's how DC does it. I can't wait to see how they bring them in. Mm-hmm. So later on, we got some shit going on, and Henry starts hearing his father's voice in his head while he's like arguing with his housekeeper or some shit. Let me just say, like, he's watching these tapes, and Brainwave's talking about how he felt better after he killed these people. And I was like, this dude is sick. He a whole ass villain. And I was like, Henry, I hope you see this. I hope you see your dad is a full-on villain. Nope. And then, no, <laughs> because then he goes to the hospital because he's hearing his dad talk to him. It's fucking insane, but I can't say anything about that. And then it's like he gets there and he hears the orderly or the nurse, and I was like, damn, he's going to kill that nurse. Mm-hmm. And I was like, they don't... I they, definitely thought he was about to kill the nurse. I was like, they do too much shit for him to just be, mar- just be murdered for his thoughts that was supposed to be secret like and so like and then he's just like when he starts talking about how evil people are and i was just like damn bro like is evilry like genetic like cindy henry that's it we don't have anyone right now they the thing is what was so messed up about what he was saying is in a way he was right and it's just like yeah, people suck. That doesn't mean you get to kill them all, though. Like, it's exactly. just like... I get it. It's like, a, it's like, yeah, a... but... <laughs> <sighs> what were you about to say? I'm sorry, I think I cut you off. I have no idea. <laughs> once it's gone, it's gone. Like, right now, for the next hour, once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> okay. So So then Dr. Ito is telling the team that they don't have to wait for Brainwave anymore because they got Henry. Yeah. And then it 
weirdly transitions to Jordan and Barbara talking. And I'm just like, that's crazy. Like, how'd you get from point A to point B so quick? Which we will find out later. But like, I don't know. I get weirded out every time I see Barbara and Jordan talking. Like, alone. I think you're supposed to. Okay. Because I feel like that too. Every time I see them talking, I'm thinking Jordan's up to some shit. So. Right. Like, and it's like, I can't tell if it's because I know he's a villain. It's like, Barbara, no. Or if it's on some shit of like, because remember, I said I had this theory that Jordan doesn't know who she is. He doesn't know that Courtney is Stargirl yet. And yeah, like, I, like, and I feel like he does that. So he wouldn't know like Barbara's connection. I feel like he genuinely is interested in her despite the fact that she is married. I feel like he does not give a shit about that. He does so not give I'm half just, a shit about that. Right. So that's why I'm just kind of like, I feel like, like, I don't know if I'm uncomfortable because she's a married woman or because Jordan is a villain. And it's honestly probably a, a hybrid mix of both. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, then we got a little short scene where Pat's trying to figure out if there's a really an underground tunnel in the city that, you know, the Injustice Society is, you know, using to connect which, and shit. Which, which makes sense. Yeah, it would. It would. Um, and this is when we get Courtney going to talk to Henry. It does not go well. <laughs> like he's he's not happy with her. He he's tight. Like he's like, so you's gonna you gonna fry my dad's brain and then come try to talk to me about I gotta help you. Like ignoring uh, the fact that he tried to fry her brain first. You know, like that was that was a thing, sir. Like. Like he was gonna kill him. Oh, so you just fried his brain? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, like I'm trying to live. Like if that was me, I would have definitely been like, yeah, because fuck him. But I mean, she and she was like, it wasn't on purpose, and he was like, oh, okay. Like he instantly like untensed. Like I was just like, nigga, that does not. <laughs> what it does not change anything? Nothing at all. It changes nothing. Um, <laughs> so then we got, you know, this whole thing where Barbara invites Jordan over to the house for dinner and he shows up. And of course, you know, Cameron is Jordan's son, by the way, they, they didn't go to homecoming together because, you know, she, she got, got in a car, car accident, you know, quotes, car accident. Um, so that was a Bummer. interesting, inter interesting dinner. Because Barbara invited these people over and didn't even run it by nobody until when she was already cooking dinner. Which we find out she she's not a very good cook, and she should have just. What told. is it with the women on this sh on this in this universe that people apparently have struggled with their cooking? I don't know, but every one of these shows, you're right. The men do the cooking. <laughs> There's just... always at least one girl who they just like sweetheart. No, 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 no. <laughs> Step aside. I got this. You go be career woman. You do that. I'll cook. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love, I love the 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 modernness. I'm just like, okay, can you but, stop shitting on us too? What is like, it? Every show do does it though. <laughs> just, yeah, I was right. like, can I be can I be working woman, but also still know how to throw down a souffle? Like, I was like, <laughs> capable. At least be capable. You know, she don't have to be like the greatest gourmet chef in the world, but at least don't make her incompetent right. in the kitchen. You know, I'm not like a pastry chef, but I was like, I can fuck up a cake for you. Like, oh, yeah, double chocolate. I mean, yeah, I can do that. You have my address. So anyway, um, it's a very interesting dinner with the McKent family. Why, like, I, I like how, like, I felt like Barbara was asking, like, what are you and Cameron doing for dinner? And this nigga brought, like, his parents. And I'm just like, what? what who does that? Who does that? But I was so like, okay. Like, it's okay, a very good like, question. I would like to know who does that as well. But clearly, and then on top of that, like they not even like they talking shit in Norwegian. Like yo, they are talking so much shit about Courtney during this whole thing. And I'm just like, do they and know? Jordan something? just like whatever. <laughs> right, because I know he understands. Does Cameron understand though? Because like, 
I feel like he wouldn't. I feel like they, I feel like mm, I think he does. Because you can't grow up around that and not pick up any of it. You right. And he said, "Don't look at me. I just speak. Fr- I did. I took French. Yeah, whatever. But you grew up around your grandparents and your parents speaking Norwegian like this. You Facts. learned this shit. You know what the fuck they're saying." Facts. I mean, it's like me with Spanish. I'm low key fluent in Spanish, but don't ask me to do it. <laughs> no, but you can understand it when it's spoke around you. Yeah, a little bit here and there. That's what I'm saying. Like even me. Like I know what I like to call valet Spanish. Which is basically everything that's related to my job as in valet, I can tell you, but I also understand more than people think I do. Mm-hmm. So I know, like a lot of the times when people are talking about me, they don't think I know. Yeah, that I kind know of shit. Food stand Spanish. <laughs> that's which important. is like a which is like a mixture of like Portuguese too at times. Yeah, yeah. See me me living in what is basically North Mexico. AKA San Antonio. And then also working in Florida, AKA North Cuba. You know, it's just like, you just, you just pick up Spanish while you just, you know. North Cuba. It is. <laughs> Florida is North Cuba slash North Puerto Rico. It is the same shit. I literally just told my friends, I was like, we should go to Cuba when this is all over because they're not going to let us in. Nonetheless, Cuba is too close to Florida right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, that's also a possibility for our family trip. We just hang out in Puerto Rico. Because writing like a villa in Puerto Rico is hella cheap right now. I could imagine. Even before all this pandemic shit happened, it was like way cheaper than you would expect. Because they need the tourism, Travis. They got hit by a whole hurricane. Yeah, you're probably right. Or tsunami. One or the other. They got hit by something bad. Puerto Rico, I think it was a hurricane. Yes. Yes. We're going to assume that's the case because I don't remember anymore. Haiti was, the, Haiti was the earthquake. Yes. If we're wrong, please correct us nicely. We're not trying to offend. <laughs> we're not. Anyway. Back to what's happening on this show. We got Yolanda. She just attacks Henry in the hospital because fuck him. <laughs> like, and tells him, like, yo, you stay the way, stay the fuck away from Courtney. You stay away from our, all our all my friends and people because fuck you. And he hears her thoughts like, yo, I loved you. I trust you, all that stuff. You betrayed me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fuck Henry. You make us all look bad, Henry. You don't be leaking news, bruh. She sent you nudes and you leaked them. You keep those for yourself. Why would you share that? I've never understood dudes who leaked nudes that were sent to him. Those are for you. For you to enjoy. If nudes are sent to me, I keep them for myself, for myself to enjoy. I don't want to share. You think I want other people to know what you're working with? No. No, that's mine. If you send me the titties, those are now my titties. They can't see the titties. Like, oh, she sent you do, but let me see. Like, no, those are my titties. Henry can sit on the same bench as August Alcina. Let's let's not get into August and we- his violation of side nigger protocol. We won't, but like I was just saying, like he can sit on the same bench. He can, he can, because I have zero respect for that nigga too. Stay in your goddamn lane. That's the problem. Motherfuckers can't stay in their damn lane. Anyway, we got this point where Jordan is like at the dinner table and Courtney has just pulled a pot out of the stove out of the oven. I mean, um, they, dumplings. Yeah, chicken and dumplings, which I what? love chicken and dumplings. You, you like chicken and dumplings? I don't know if I've had it, but it just sounds so good. <sighs> like, I've had chicken and gnocchi, which is like Italian dumplings, but it's not the same. Mm-mm. All right, listen, listen. When, when COVID is over and, you know, we got a hold of, of the Rona, there's going to be 
a family reunion for my mother's side of the family in Louisiana. All right. I'm not going in there in Louisiana for like another year. It won't happen till next summer. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is when that all happens, you have to come to the family reunion. Because there will be chicken and dumplings there. Can I just say I'm like a distant relative that I was just like, I'm like this one side kid. Like I just I just got found like a year ago. It doesn't matter. Just show up. Just say you with me. You're good. Okay. I got clout. All right. You good. I'm Travis's cousin friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something. Just say you in here with Travis and you all right. Everybody on that side of the family loves Travis. I feel like you just got to explain because then it's like you show up with a kid and they're just going to be like, Travis. Like, no, that's not Travis's kid. Don't worry. That's not what's happening. She's just here with me because that's my dog. All right? It's cool. Don't she worry. Wanted the food. <laughs> listen, listen. She's here because I told her to be here. Don't worry. Like, it, it's cool. It's cool. I honestly on both sides of the family. Everybody loves Travis. All right. I need it's to cool. know. Will there be handmade biscuits to go with these chicken and dumplings? This is my Louisiana fa family. There's no other way for them to do it. Okay. And most likely it'll be in July because my sister usually organizes the family unions on my mother's side of the family and she always puts them around her birthday. That sounds selfish, but I'm it is. It, it's it's very selfish, but the thing is, I one hundred percent respect it because she, then she has she it so that everybody's you. around for her birthday to tell her happy birthday. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm not upset with her about it at all. It's fine. If it wasn't for the fact that my birthday was in the dead of winter, I'd be like, I would probably do the same thing. Here's the thing: the best part about it is every family reunion because it's her birthday. We get lemon meringue pie and ice cream cake. So it's just like, all right, I'm 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 cool. And I'm I'll not really right. a sweets person, but lemon meringue pie and ice cream cake are, are good ways to get me in. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how we strayed away from Yolanda. I have no idea how we got talking about family unions and ice cream cake. But we all, we were oh, chicken and dumplings. dumplings. Yeah. Yeah. So Courtney burned herself getting the chicken and dumplings out of the oven, which I don't know why they were still in the oven, but whatever. Oh, wait, before this, they did talk about the city being founded by Freemasons. Yeah. And, and that uh, Norwegian prayer. Yeah. And they built like those secret tunnels. It was like, this is why the ISA chose Blue Valley because they can travel everywhere like undetected yeah. and do things. But back to dinner with the McKent family. <laughs> So yeah, she burned herself getting the chicken and dumplings out of the oven and then bring them, brings them to the table. And, you know, Jordan just grabs the fucking pot. Or the, he was, whatever. whoever, I think it was Barbara talking, he was so into what she was saying that he was just like, yeah, give me that, like, dumpling, dumpling. <laughs> she was just like, she was just like, wait, no, wait, the and fuck? And Courtney's like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm thinking like, I just third degree burned my hand on that shit and you just holding it like it's nothing. Yeah, so she tries to tell Pat and Pat's like, you don't know this, we can't get all up in this yet, we don't know for sure. Oh, Pat, 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 Pat. Here's the thing, I understand he's I wrong, but I understand why he thinks this way. I'm saying, but like you pull a pot, a pan, a ceramic pan, because that's what it was, because I know my dishes. You pull a ceramic pan out of the oven if it's already been sitting in there like i have to figure it's probably been sitting in there like on like you know the classic 350 maybe like a 250 to keep it just like just to keep it warm mm -hmm. and shit and it's just like it's gonna be hot regardless because even no matter what that's 250 degrees touching your skin no matter what there's no logic behind this i don't care if you worked in construction since you were out of the uterus. Hold on. There, no Hold way on. would Hold it on, feel it. Hold on, Mar. Let me just throw this out there for you. Throw it out. Your daughter's patriarchal side of the family. Have you seen them heat tortillas on the stove? 
I do the same thing, but it's not the same. Have it's you not- seen them with the tortillas in the grease and flip them with their bare hands, Mark? Oh, not not in grease. We just put tortillas on the pan and we just flip them. I've seen them on the pan with grease, without grease, and flip the damn things with their bare goddamn hands, Mara. I've seen it. I live in San Antonio, a.k.a. North Mexico. I've seen this shit happen. That being said. But, I mean, when you think about, like, how many many seconds... Have I sent you that video? No. I'll send you, remind me to send you a video after we're done with this. Gotcha. But, I'm feeling like the amount of seconds, it, like the amount of seconds you're using to flip a tortilla versus him. Don't palming. you try to justify that shit. You know that shit is inhuman. I feel like if you do it fast enough, you're good. I can't do that because I have nails. But like, I feel like the, I feel like the amount of time that he is palming this pan in his bare hand, and he's also spooning food out of it, which is also applying more pressure to his hand. You're not going to sit here and tell and rationalize this may not be icicle. The only person who could take that is the ice miser himself. (laughs) He is practically, like, if you told me he voiced that nigga in the movie, I'd be like, you know what? Down to the icy breath and everything. (laughs) so in addition to that he also as they're all leaving tells Courtney he's he accepted the invitation because he wanted to know who his son was all enamored with and all that kind of shit but at the same time making Courtney very uncomfortable because she doesn't know if he knows that she's star girl and shit I low-key was I low-key was thinking he was getting ready to say I came because of your mom and I was just like Huh. He came because of her mom. <laughs> he, I was like, yo, he's trying to tell Courtney. And he's going to come like, again because of her mom. I'm, I'm going to take your mom from your stepdaddy. Oh, man. So that's what that. I thought he was saying. I was just like, yo, he's about to come and try. He's about to be like, I'm going to fuck your mom, man. Like, that's how it's going to go. So, after all that is said and done, they leave. Courtney goes downstairs to go get the cosmic staff because she wants to stop spy on Jordan some more. Pat comes downstairs like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? What? I wish she would just stop just doing stuff without like saying something about it. She won't. You know why? Because she's a dumbass teenager. And that's the stupid shit they do. I know. I hate them all. Had some dumbass teenager shit happen in my family recently. When we're done recording, I'll talk to you about it. Um, yeah. So while that's happening, she's arguing with Pat. And guess what happens? Barbara like, comes down. Because he was like, yo, we're not doing anything until we tell Barbara, which I understand. But at the same time, I'm just, I, I still stand where I stood last week. I was like, I feel like if you tell Barbara too soon, you're going to freak her the fuck out and she's going to make it obvious that she knows something is wrong in the town. And now that, they, and especially now that Courtney thinks that, well, I mean, she knows that Icicle, I mean, Jordan's Icicle, you know, because only makes sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like now they have to also tell her that part. And it's like, she seems very charmed by her boss. Like, not like, and like she would give it to him, like, you know what I'm saying? But like, you can tell you that she, she would. You don't think no. she would? I feel like he would try to make a move, and I feel like she would be like, no. I feel like she would back up very quickly. Hmm. Okay. That's how she strikes me. Like, you would know stri- better than me. So, yeah. She strikes me as, like, she would be like, oh, no, no, no. I'm married. Like, but, like, I feel like she wants to think that he wants to do best for the town. I think that like, mm. she believes in his, in his vision. Because she doesn't know about the brain About the evilness. <laughs> feel like she would be like that's that's what i also been thinking about since this episode closed or when barbara saw it i was like because now that you got to tell her i was like what if it's like she goes to jordan and he tells her what happened like his vision and she's just like i get it and then it's just like how do you convince your mom or slash wife that she's siding with the villain because that's also another plausible plot i see it going like plausible road i see it going down 
you're either going to make her mad paranoid and mad and obviously tense around him or you're going to have her become very confrontational and then she may also go to his side or they're just maybe that that happens and then he just kills her like <laughs> you know you don't know i don't because this show is a wild card because they kill kids and parents like they're worse than disney who is slowly <laughs> trying to who won't stop till everyone's parents are dead <laughs> so let's cut back to henry in the you know he gets to the hospital because he's hearing his father's voice and his father's lawyer shows up wanting him to sign some papers and he realizes he's full of shit he ends up and killing also, the fucking lawyer, Mar. <laughs> because the lawyer showed up at like nine o'clock at night trying to unplug his dad. Like, nigga, can you wait till eight in the morning during business hours? <laughs> yeah, he didn't even show up during business hours. That was really like, you know, even if he couldn't read your mind, he would have probably known something. Fucked he up. literally handed him papers. However, going if he to was a normal teenager, it. he probably would have signed the papers because teenagers are fucking stupid. But yep. he would have been like, I mean, I guess. Like he would ask a series of questions and be like, I mean, if I'm not a, I'm not a brain surgeon, so I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like nigga showed up at like mad late at night, handed him papers, and then proceeded to walk as if he was just gonna turn it off anyway. Like I was like, bro, disrespect. Yeah, yeah. So baby brainwave ends up killing this nigga. His first kill. And then his father wakes up like, oh shit. I'm literally, I was literally looking at my phone, watching it, like the, like the shocked emoji, like <laughs> that, and that, so that's where I like before I was like, this has slowly been creeping up the list of like, like my top tier of, of the Arrowverse shows. Very and well done show. And it's like, I really like, I wanted to, I didn't want to, like, I still that hate teenagers, but a very well done show. I know. But it's like, so. When you asked earlier, I almost said Batwoman first because behind Flash, except for like last season or so, like I thought Batwoman was done very well, which is why I was so disappointed that Ruby Rose was leaving. Um, and they announced her replacement. Right, and I'm okay with that. I think it's more just like, you know me, like I'm very anal about the story finishing and I just mm -hmm. don't know how they're going to close it because I don't even think this season was fully finished because of yeah. quarantine. Yeah. I mean, because of COVID. So it's like, I think it's more because I'm more disappointed that she left that woman is because I won't get, I probably won't get the closure that I want. I feel you. And then so like, but like, I would still put that season as like the, the right below the Flash. And since I don't want to put Flash as one, Batwoman kind of goes up to that. But I've enjoyed Stargirl enough that I would put it right behind Batwoman. Because the way the story has unfolded, as opposed to like, like Arrow, where Oliver was just taking out rich niggas left and right, you know, and then, you know, Barry, who, you know, was trying to figure out himself, like they were unfolding these things. I feel like I like that Courtney is getting to learn what she's capable of, and she's being a dumb teenager about it, but she's also like, it's also watching a group band together. So it's like watching how legends came together, but it's less forced. Like yeah. it's kind of more just like she's organically picking people. And yeah. I think that's like, I think that's what makes it better. And then it's also because we know there's a villain, but we don't know who they are and they're hiding in plain sight. Like, and they're people that we interact with on every day. Like last week when you realized that Sportsmaster was fucking Pat's trainer. I think we both realized that last week. Yeah. But you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I think it's because it keeps the plot keeps thickening instead of it being like, oh my God, when will you realize this is the bad guy <laughs> and that he's already doing the bad stuff? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, Mara, tell me who's, who's winning, winning this week. Brainwave is so winning this week. Oh, he is winning all this over the place. I'm, thank you so much. This thing just woke up from his brain being fried. Like, they just tried to... Woke up from his brain being fried, and his son is frying other niggas' brains. Like, he is, he is so winning. Right, like, he woke up as someone was just about to unplug him. You tell me that's not the God... If that's not God's work, I don't know what it is. Right. God won't do it. 
who's losing? Oof. Cindy. Yeah, she all Cindy's locked up locked in the in basement a dungeon. <laughs> She's locked up in a cage right now, being gassed. By her, her own eyes. father. <laughs> By her own dad, gassing her when he don't want to hear her voice no more. Like... In his in his defense, her voice annoys me too, but you can't do that to your own daughter. You're right. I'm just saying. All right, folks. I think that'll be the end for this week's episode of Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow. Do not forget to follow us on both Twitter and Instagram at the Creation World. That is at T H E C R E A T I A World. If you don't know how to spell world, get a fucking dictionary. Also. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash creation world. This particular podcast has a Facebook group. What's that group, Mar? Facebook.com slash group slash super flash year of tomorrow. Um, you can also follow me on both Twitter and Instagram at sir underscore cuslot. That is at S I R underscore C U S S A L O T T. Mar, where can they find you? Always on Instagram and Twitters at Mard Shark. That's M A R A D A S H A R K. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, if you're a wrestling fan, don't forget to check out Smacking It Raw every week. There's a Facebook group that goes along with that also. Facebook.com slash group slash smacking it raw. No G. No G and smacking. I believe that's everything. Subscribe to the YouTube because I still need more YouTube subscribers on there. Like, do subscribe better. Subscribe to the YouTube. Once subscribe again, I'll put the fucking link hub. in the description subscribe here. To Go to the fucking YouTube and subscribe. All right? Literally. You don't even have to turn on notifications. Just subscribe. Just subscribe. It's free. It and literally it'll... won't cost you anything but five seconds of your time. And it'll get you, like, more nerd shit. So just do that shit. Because if you're already here, you're already looking for nerd shit. Exactly. So why not subscribe to get more nerd shit? That'll be it for this week. We'll see you all next week. Deuces. Yeah. We'll catch you then. Until then, we out. <laughs>